What's up, y'all? Welcome to another review by Ryan, and a very happy Thursday to all of you. It is Thursday, January 19th. I hope you all are doing well wherever you're at at the time you find this reaction. I'm going to be trying to get through my reactions today a little quicker than normal, but that is because um, the Sign movie comes out today here in the United States, and I'll be going to see it in a bit. So, really excited about that. Slime, another really wonderful anime, in case you guys haven't watched it yet. With that said, though, we are not here to talk about slime. We are here to talk about the sadness and depression that is known as the second cur of the fourth season of Don Machi. And in this video reaction, we'll be reacting to the third episode titled That Fiend Lado's Friend. Um, so, you know, there's not a lot. Well, actually, there's a lot to say. And there's a lot on my mind. And I really thought about what I wanted to say here. So I'm just going to say just a few points here. Um, you know, I've said time and time again since the, the fourth season started that I feel that we, we are being treated to the best Don Machi we've ever been treated to. And I, I truly do mean that from the bottom of my heart. This, this, is, this is everything that I expected out of this series and more. And even then, you could not have possibly prepared me for the absolute, the absolute dire straits that Bell's party is finding themselves in right now. Uh, at the beginning of last episode, I said that things were looking on the up and up for Bell's team up on the twenty on the twenty fifth layer. You know, may, maybe things aren't going to be so bad, and they'll 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 find a way to pull off a miracle and make it out of there alive. And I got to tell you, I left the episode saying, "Well, I'll be damned. We may not have a single person." <laughs> <laughs> left to celebrate victory for when the episode and the season's all said and done. Um, it, it was an absolute disaster. Um, nothing went right last episode. Um, and, and it's funny I say nothing went right because honestly, I say nothing went right, but think a lot of things did go right. They should have been dead ages ago. Uh, we're seeing what good preparation and good communication and trying to keep a clear head can do for your survivability when you are faced with insurmountable odds like the odds they're up against um, with Amthus, the uh, the floor boss that they've been trying to beat for the last few episodes. Um, but even with all the greatest preparations and everything possibly going your way, going your way, um, they're just up against an insurmountable strength in a dungeon that, might I know, has now been triggered in a way that it was never designed to be triggered um, because people were messing around with things they shouldn't have been messing with. The boss is here much sooner than they were expecting. Everyone's tired right now. I'm going to assume that Amphis, the, the, the boss himself, is tired right now, but it doesn't even matter because they're so horribly weakened that... You know, even one mistake at this point could just be a complete loss of life. And as you all saw by the end of the episode, for Mikoto and um, Haruhime, I don't even know if they're here with us. Now, I want to say, before I say this next part, some of you wrote some really great responses, especially in my Discord. And if you did write responses, thank you. I didn't read them. I'm not reading those until I have finished this segment and have gotten confirmation visually if... Our characters that look like they're lost are actually here or not. So after I have final confirmation of that, which normally when it comes to anime, we've got to see the bodies or, you know, in this case, disintegration. Um, I'm going to avoid reading things that may accidentally spoil me to something I don't want to see. So this reaction is based off of my own opinions of the last episode and not off of anything that was written. If you did write something, don't worry. I promise you I will read it once this segment is over. But I do not want to risk a spoiler even by accident because we left at a really crazy moment. Mikoto, I don't know what the hell's going on with her down there. I'm assuming she's just been eaten alive. And out of the two, if one of them had to survive, I guess I'll say it's Hadahime because not only is she the buffer for the team, but I know that she also has been wearing like clothing and material that may hopefully help her deal with an attack such as the attack that happened from Amphis, which of course happened because 
again, the creature's also starting to get beat up now, and so now the creature's starting to lash out now, and so now this is when the creature is at its most dangerous. So, I don't know, I, I, it was a really heartbreaking episode, last episode, and, you know, seeing Aisha just kind of completely almost lose her cool um and she, actually she did lose her cool at the thought that Harahime may no longer be with us um it was just a really heartbreaking into the episode but as I said before at least some of them may still stand a chance we know that help is on the way for them whether the help can get there in time and actually be helpful enough to take the boss down is a different story um but at least hopefully some of them will get out of this alive but for Bell and Ryu, I mean, it, it, it's, it's just not looking good for them at all. It's, 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 it's honestly just a lot worse. Bell was saved. He's been saved at least twice. And he immediately gets hurt again. Uh, almost a complete devastating injury. And now he's trying to get a little bit of rest. You know, Ryu's trying to give him some time to take a break. Because this man's just been going nonstop since they've been there. Especially her since, you know, the whole reason this all triggered was because she found out someone she thought she had taken care of was still alive. Which led us into the dungeon. Which led us to this moment. Um, you know, she's in horrible, in horribly bad shape too. She casted the last of her healing ability so that he would have a chance. And now she's trying to let him get some rest while she's realizing what she said. Can I survive for five minutes with the damn juggernaut literally here ready to... I bite our heads off, and the juggernaut's not the only problem here. We got the three-headed skull here. We got it's just a horrible mess in the dungeon. And I got to tell you, this is what I've been waiting for and equally dreading because now we've gotten so many great moments and we've had plenty of dire straight moments in this series. Even all the way back to the first episode when um, Bell rescued Lily from her demise and he got his permanent strategist and partner, partner in crime slash girl that loves him dearly. Um, and, you know, we've had moments through the first three seasons, yes, even including what was a horrible second season. Um, again, we got some of the best, uh, my, a good friend of mine actually got her best girl out of the second season, which is why she's really going through it right now, hoping that her best girl does not also find a way to die down here in this dungeon situation. So the second season did produce good stuff. But we had three seasons, and we've definitely gotten taste of the dire straits of what could really happen down here. But nothing like what's happening in this fourth season. And this, this, and if this first three episodes of the second curve is any example, well, the first two episodes, we're about to watch the third episode... I just I, the, the time for them to succeed and 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 just all the good mojo that they had it's just running out guys and I'm very anxious to see where we go from this point. So that's my initial thoughts. One thing I want to say before we start the reaction is I am doing my own weekly ratings and as you will see on the screen because of everything that you just heard me say, Don Machi is definitely the series I am most invested in at this current moment in the season. It is my favorite show by leaps and bounds of the season, and it does stand alone, commandingly at the top of my list at the number one spot. It is my most favorite show to watch right now. It's my best show of, this, of the season as we in a very young season, and obviously the beginning of our anime year for 2023, and... I, I'm just anxious to see where we go from here. So, going to get some water real quick. And when I come back, we'll start the reaction. All right, I'm back. It's time to start. Episode is up. Volume is up. And we're going to get started with the third episode of this second arc. Again, the title is Daphne, uh, Daphne Lados. So, let's get this started in three, two, one. Oh, no. No, we're not about to start the flashback now. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, goodness gracious. Don't let this whole flashback be a death flag for her. Oh, my goodness. Leon, oh. We're going to get the Familia flashback now. Oh, this is awful. Why would you do that after last the last two episodes? I'm already over it. I'm scared, guys. That means that now, with all the depression that we had in the last two, or the first two episodes of this arc, of this curve, we're going to have to now watch the death now.
Dang, I am literally scared to my stomach right now. I this is I am not looking forward to this. This is not going to be a good time. I'm going to have to literally we're going to have to literally watch our familia get axed. This is awful. Oh no. Now we're back. Okay. So a very brief flashback. But the question is how? How do y'all get out of this insurmountable situation? Yeah, because she's ready to throw her hope. Fuck. She got two. One more. He woke up. Damn, no way he was going to sleep through that. Was it really five minutes ago? Oh. I guess. Maybe, maybe not. Thank goodness, though. Even a slight doze off will help, though.
This is bad. They're losing it. Oh shit! The hell is... Definitely poison. We knew he was coming under, too. I'm not gonna lie, my worst fear is he was just gonna be obliterated from under. At least he's still here. Has he found something? Thank goodness. Oh, thank goodness, bruh. He knew that she was there. Excuse me? How she's getting through that pain and didn't get killed down there. It's just incredible. How? I don't know, but she is. Harihime. Thank you! Okay! Which means the theory about the cape. Oh. Yep, it was. She won't get a second chance.
Bro, I had fucking chills. They did. Oh my goodness. And I really don't know how you lived. They pulled it off. They actually pulled it off. Man. Wow. I have no idea how y'all did. <laughs> I mean, I do, but oh man. Ah. That's right, things have been so dire. Yeah, that we forgot that we gotta collect the rare goods. But now, all focus goes back down to the 37th. Or not? Question? It's breaking apart now? Or is something else moving? What in the... But what... Yeah, we've already broken... Every time this happened, though, Cassandra, you cannot give in to despair. I know it's hard, but girl, we... Literally, there is not a damn thing. They're all the way at the 30... Y'all barely are living! I get it though, I do, but... I just don't know what y'all can do in such a broke. Thank you for speaking. Okay, thank you for thank you for speaking. And honestly, I thought about it because she's talking about a coffin being formed. Yeah. Yeah, you know, she really might be right, because y'all go to 24 and you might end up dying. Bruh, nothing that she's been saying has been... 
Oh my god. And you'll die on the 24th, now that I really think about it. Honestly, this is such a crappy situation either way. And honestly, I kind of trust Cassandra right now a lot. And now that she's actually speaking out, I really think you guys need to listen. Y'all need to open your ears and listen very closely. I'll take it. Uh, I'll take it. Because y'all will die if you don't listen at this point. Oh my girl. Now let's see if we get a vision back to the 24th, since they're taking roots right now. Yep. Good call. And they're going to be trapped in. But in a way, being trapped in would probably be better than what would be waiting if they had tried to go to the 24th. Yeah. She damn well did. Now I apologize. Damn, but with two party members down with major injuries, it's, a hard, it's just hard. And now this also means that any help that was coming into the dungeon is going to be cut off too. So it's just them. I, I, it's just so much to unpack. So much to unpack. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to watch this episode a good, uh, at least one more time. Oh, so much to unpack. Whew!
And that means we'll have to save the suffering of learning about Yu's Familia for another day. Since we did not tackle that this episode, so... Eatness. All right, we're going to stop the video right there, guys. All right, so there's a lot to unpack in this episode, and I, like I just said, I'm definitely going to have to watch this again. So I'm just try to stay as brief as I can. Um, first and foremost, I, I I get how Hadahime made it because she had the cape that she had been wearing, and that and that was again. I, I thought it was a scarf cape, uh, a scarf a cape. I knew she has been wearing that, and that probably helped her survive the initial impact, and it fried it. Now, had she been hit a second time, there is absolutely no way in hell she would have survived, it and she would have died. But that makes a lot more sense. I get that Mikoto had been kind of prepping up for this attack that she ended up using to help, basically a gravity-based attack that ended up holding the creature down just enough uh, for them to be able to take the final blows. Um, but I, I still don't really know how she made it out of that. I guess that she also had gear on that was protecting her, but she, you know, being the type of fighter that she is, she's, um, you know, very light on her feet, so she didn't really have overly a lot of protection, so um, maybe it's just how time went or whatever the circumstance may be. I'll go rewatch that again, uh, but I, I gotta say, I do not know how Mikoto made it out of this alive. I really, really don't. Am I happy that she made it out of this alive? Absolutely, and because of the power that was being used, yes, I will live, I will let it get its pass, but I just have to rewatch that scene, and I'll probably talk a little bit more about that later. I am, but I'm very happy to see that they made it, primarily because of the fact that we now know they are going to be continuing after all, and y'all saw I was shifting up here and there how I felt about them. No, go to the 24th! No, go to the 26th! But once my girl Cassandra started speaking, I said go to the 26th because that's it. That's it. That is the discussion. I will say that theme was pissing me off just a little bit, though. I understand not wanting to believe these, what you believe to be ridiculous uh, um, uh, precognitions, but my thing is... Up to this point, everything she said has been true. And I know that some of you will be like, well, Ryan, understand that she hasn't really been verbally stating how she feels about these things, what her visions really are, and actually putting her foot down when she says X, Y, and Z. And this goes all the way back to when, before they entered the dungeon, before they went looking out, going after the... Um, should she have said something then? Yes. Now, do I believe Bell would have still taken action? Even if she had 100% been believed? Yes. He was not going to let you just stay by herself. No way in hell he would do that. It goes against his character. That goes against everything he believes in. Then the morals of the entire familia that he's built up. They would have absolutely gone after her regardless. But at least there could have been a whole hell of a lot of more preparation. And look, guys, we us entering what we're about to enter, we really are probably we may not make it out of this dungeon alive. And the deal of may some of them not make it out still? Yes. Because, no offense to Haruhime, no offense to Mikoto. We now have two bits of Deadwick that are going to be continuing into the lower floors now, going after Bell, where they have to go through a lot of healing, and they're just going to have to heal as time goes on. They have used up a lot of strength and a lot of their trump cards already, and we've only advanced one floor. And as a reminder, Bell and Liu are down at the 37th layer. They are down at the layer of the White Palace. They are in serious, beyond imminent danger at this point. And now two of your players, your one player being your buffer, the one that keeps all of you alive when these crazy attacks happen, is now down for the count, and that's how to heme. So we are in serious danger right now, and I have no idea how they're going to survive going down lower now, but it was the right call. Cassandra said, you know, her precognition, her thought, her, her, her visions that she's had, it showed exactly what was going to happen, and I am proud of Cassandra, and in a way, I am proud of that thing 
finally shutting up and realizing maybe she should listen. Like she said, she doesn't believe the she doesn't believe the visions, but she believes in her friend. She believes in the person that she has been working with this whole time, and I will take it. Definitely some trust issues. I hope we work out as time goes on later, but I will definitely take it, and I'm glad that she listened because we would have been looking at the entire cast being wiped from the face of the planet, except Liu and Belle, had they not listened, and they end up like the other guys from the Turks that are now gone and dead. So, um, with that said, as far as going back down to the 37th layer and the situation going on with Belle and Liu right now, I'm glad that they did survive. I'm glad that um, Liu was able to use what little bit of her strength that she had to deal with the uh, to deal with the skull sheet that decided to show back up. Um, but again, their situation is no better than it, no better or worse than it was when we ended the last episode. And now she's trying to rest, and now she's having her visions. And of course, her visions are ultimately going to show um, the past with her familia, which also means that we will probably have to see their demises too. So that brings me also to the only negative thing. Perhaps they could have just completely held off on starting to debut them until after we had wrapped up this fight. I think that because I, I was going through so many different emotions within a few minutes with this episode. We started there. We had the first vision. We go to the fight. We go back to having the second little vision. And then we focus fully on the fight, fully wrapping up. And now we're back down to them. My only thing is just maybe we could have stayed just a little bit more focused on the wrap up of the fight. The entire Cassandra vision part. And then the entire next episode, we could have fully focused on the emotions that we're going to go through as we learn about her familia. That's just my personal preference. That takes nothing away. It's a very minor thing. Um, it's, you know, it's not a big deal, but it just maybe we could have just stayed completely focused on the fight in the aftermath of that and then focus back more on Bell and them in the following episode. So, uh, but yeah, that's my initial thoughts. Again, let me know your thoughts now because we have wrapped up the fight with the 25th floor. I will go back and read the comments that were left. I know there was one really big comment left um, by, by a person who has been leaving these comments. And again, thank you so much to the person who always kind of fills in the points of the light novel. I really do appreciate it. I chose not to read your comment last week because I wanted to make sure that I went into this week with just every expectation that I left the previous week with. Now that we've wrapped up this fight, I'll go back and read and I'll respond appropriately um, as soon as I get an opportunity. And thank you. Please keep the commentary coming. I really do appreciate it. And like I said, for anyone else who wants to comment, please drop your comments. Um, if you are tagging things from the light novel, just remember only share things for events that have already happened just to fill in the gaps of those events. Do not share anything for future events that have not happened. So thanks a lot. That's my reaction. That's my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I leave a lot more optimistic than I did the last episode and we'll go ahead and adjourn this reaction here. So if you did like the video, please uh, like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to be one of the first to be notified when a new reaction becomes available, Available, hit the bell icon. Apologies if I forgot to mention a few things. There's a lot going through my mind right now. A lot of things happened this episode. I'm almost certain I forgot certain things, but I'll try to pick back up on those things next week. Uh, but I'll see you all next week for the fourth episode of the second arc of Don Machi's season four. The title of the episode is Ignis, and until that time, catch you later.